Hello, um, I'm Lucy and I'm going to introduce you to my friend the chair. It's really good for improving forward bends but also as a support for shoulder stands. So this is going to be a simple practice. Again, I'm going to show you how to use the props. So if you haven't got these things, uh, run off and get them now, pause me. You need uh, four foam pads, you need a bolster, a blanket, maybe a belt, an extra sticky mat and a chair. Okay, and then also the mat that you're practicing on. Um, if you haven't got these things, then don't turn off now. Um, carry on watching because it is a really nice way of learning as watching how the body moves and um, how postures can evolve by actually holding ourselves back a little bit, not trying to go into the full pose the whole time, but working out where do these movements come from. So I'm gonna try and shed a little bit of light on that today. Okay, so let's just start by centering ourselves. So sit, sit in simple Sukhasan. Sukhasan means easy or happy pose. The feet um, actually support the shins, uh, and so they're giving the legs something to rest upon. Also have enough height that the knees drop away from the hip bones. And what that does also is it gives you the extra bit of lift to be able to sit easily, comfortably. Place your hands on your thighs, and then slide the hands back. And as you slide the hands back, allow the tips of the shoulder blades to move deep into the back. And as you do that, you'll feel the skin on the shoulder down towards the elbow move downwards. Keep that action on the skin. Allow the chest to lift up and keep the um, body soft, the organic body soft. Relax the skin on the eyes. Release the tongue from the roof of the mouth. Bring your hands to prayer position. The base of the thumb comes to the base of the sternum. Lift up through the chest. As you inhale, allow the breath to move up into the body, up into the chest. As you exhale, release the shoulders, release the eyes, release the tongue. Keep the palms soft. Release the back of the neck. Relax the leg points. Give respect to your body, to your teachers, to your teachers, teachers. Keeping the chest lifted. Release the hands onto the thighs. Gently open the eyes. And raise the face. Okay, so if you'd like to stand up, you're going to stand. You're going to do Uttanasana. So as you stand up, lift your chest. And then we'll turn you sideways. Now I'd like you to take your feet hip distance apart. You're going to fold from the hips, fold forwards and take your hands onto the chair. Okay. Press the thighs back, lift the kneecaps up and allow the breastbone to move forwards. Keep the fingers long, abdomen soft. So it's not trying to pull you into the pose, you're actually allowing yourself to experience this half Uttanasana shape, Ardha Uttanasana. Keep taking the top of the thighs up and back. Bring the weight down into the heels and keep the kneecaps left lifted. So when we don't go completely into a posture, it allows us to stay here for a little while longer. And as the backs of the thighs start to spread, allow yourself to come down a little more. And you may find that you can then rest your elbows onto the chair. 
that's the case, can you rest the head? Keep the legs working very strongly. Outside edges of your feet parallel to the outside edges of your mat. Still keeping space across the abdomen. When the head's supported, so the brain kind of quietens down a little. Keep the kneecaps lifted. Thighs are firm. Giving your upper body the freedom to extend forwards, away from the legs. down the back, stand in a good tadasana, looking directly forwards. And then we'll do again, Ardha Uttanasana, half Uttanasana. Place your hands to the chair, step yourself back. Now lengthen the ribs away from the hips, take the thighs away from the ribs. So we're creating length and space along the front of our trunk. Kneecaps lifted, shoulders moving away from the ears. Relax the face, and then just release the head, allow the head to hang. Keep an eye on your knees, make sure they're still lifted, that the quads are firm, the thighs are firm, that you're spreading through the backs of the legs. And if you wish to release yourself down to the chair seat, same thing. So if you need to step in a little, step yourself in so you can rest your head. So clasp the elbows again, but change the clasp. Rest the head to the chair. Remain here. You're not trying to press your head into the chair seat, you're just letting the forehead rest. So keep the legs working to support you. Allow the abdomen to be soft. Thighs firm, spine moving deep into the back, spreading across the backs of the thighs, inner leg groins move up towards the groin so the whole of the inner leg feels long, check that the ankles are balanced, and the toes are long, don't let them crush down into the floor. Even the toes need to be doing their yoga. Relax the eyes. Smooth breath. When you're ready, inhale, look forward. Press into the hands, put the hands on the seat, straighten the arms, walk forwards and stand up. Lift through the chest, lengthen the arms down, buttock flesh moves down towards the heels, look directly forwards. Okay, let's do Janu Shishasana. So you're going to need one of your foam pads. So grab one of these. If you've got um, knees that need support, then you'll need extra foam pads. Let's move the bolster out of the way. You may want a blanket nearby. So have that next to you just in case and have your belt nearby. So the chair moves in 
and basically you have it as close to you as you need for support. So we've got different body proportions and so again you sort of you have to get to know the equipment. Okay, um, we're going to bend back the right leg into Janushishasan and we've got a little bit of a height here which is very nice to be able to get ourselves to go forwards. So we pull the buttock flesh out and back. Now if this is at all uncomfortable, say your knee is up here like that, you can either put a rolled blanket, I love these Indian blankets, the cotton ones, um, because they're, so when they're folded up they're a similar size to the foam pad, but you can also sort of make them different sizes, they can you know, prop you up. So that's a good way to support the knee. If there's still discomfort within that knee, don't, please don't keep sort of banging on with the same pose, release the leg. Either sort of don't do it for today or you put a belt behind the back of the knee and then you offer it some support so you allow the knee to bend around the belt and see whether that brings more comfort. You might well find then it still needs the belt and the, it's a bit like I went shopping, I did a yoga practice, I needed a belt and a blanket and a prop. But here you can feel that the knee supported the back of the knee is open and that should feel comfortable. If it doesn't feel comfortable, then I recommend that you go and find yourself a yoga teacher and get them to show you how to do it so you can understand it. Okay? For me today, I need neither of those things. I'm just going to bring the heel into its own groin and lift and lengthen. So to begin with, you can go forwards to here. So we're actually trying to develop the coiling action coming right from the hips, you lift up through the chest. Once you've got that lift, level your shoulders. So we've got the right leg bent back, so make sure your right shoulder is level, it's level with the left. Then you're going to exhale, and you place the hands on towards the chair, and you can rest the head down. You can keep the left leg firm, keep space along the abdomen, trying to get as much lift through the spine as possible. So although it looks like you're not doing so much, you're actually working really quite hard. Rest the head. And again, if you need to adjust the chair a little, you can always slide the chair away to rest the head onto the edge of the chair seat. Spread through the toes of the left leg. Relax across the shoulders. Turning the body, so the navel's turning towards that straight leg the whole time. Relax the shoulders. If this is too much on the shoulders, you can always hold the sides of the chair and get a good lift that way. Inhale, sit up. Stretch your right leg forwards. Same thing, bend back the left leg. So here you'll be able to see a little bit more. We actually want to coil from the hip. We want to keep this leg nice and straight, get a good coiling action from the hip. Inhale. Go towards the chair, lifting up, keeping the right leg straight and firm, spread through the toes. Get as much lift as possible, levelling through the sides of the trunk. Exhale, fold. Resting the head down onto the chair, sliding the chair away if you need to. And again, resting the arms or holding onto the sides of the chair, depending on what the shoulders will allow. Keep the right leg firm, shoulders level. Lift through the chest. Abdomen broad and soft. Relax the face. Keep the throat soft, shoulders level. Sides of the ribs moving away from the hips, moving the spine deep into the back.
thigh firm. Weight even on the buttock bones. Inhale, come up, repeat. Stretch your leg forwards. Bend back the right leg. Turn the body towards the chair. Inhale, fold. So go as far forwards as you possibly can and see whether you can go a little bit deeper into the pose. So here I'm stretching my arms. I'm still going to take them up to try and get my body to lift off my hips more. I'm just going to rest my head to the chair. Releasing across the shoulders, keeping the leg firm. Turning the body towards that straight leg as much as I can. Flesh out and back, the straight leg, sit tall, and exhale, fold. And if you practice the poses this way, you'll find that without even trying, you'll start to get deeper into a Jano Shishasan posture. especially as you're giving yourself time for the body to relax into this pose. Spread through the toes, lift up through the chest. Keep the straight leg firm. your legs forwards, down Darsan. Press the legs down, lift the chest. Try and look at Ekapada Paschimottanasan. So you're going to bend back your right leg. The little toe comes onto the floor and so does the big toe. Keep the legs straight. You want to raise the arms, stretch them up. Exhale, fold forwards to the chair. Again, lengthen forwards. So here, if the knee does not bend back, again, it might be that the leg's not ready to move that way. But again, if you put the belt behind the back of the knee and then sit like that, or say you, you feel like you're still going around a corner, so your bottom is really high, let's just release belt off. If you sit up on two blocks, and then bend the leg back. You have to keep this straight leg firm, um, especially to prevent yourself from hyperextending through the leg. What you'll find on the two blocks is that the knee is much easier to fold in its, into its shape. Get the little toe down and the big toe down. Level up the hips. And again, let me raise the arms up and fold forwards into the pose. Resting the head to the chair. And again, we're not pressing the head on the chair. It's just there to support, to take the weight off the neck. Keep the throat soft, keep the abdomen soft. With the legs working correctly, you can spread through the hamstrings as much as you would with the head down. And again, it's a very quietening way to do the pose. Keep the chest lifted. And 
Inhale, come up. Sit tall, change legs. Right leg forwards, left leg back. Little toe on the ground, foot going straight back so that the foot doesn't come around the buttock. Pull the buttock flesh out and back and lift up the chest. Raise the arms up, lift up, exhale, fold. Take the chair, rest the head. So let's say you're a little bit stiffer than I am, and a little bit less flexible. You can sit here and you can support yourself up. So the whole time you go to where you are comfortable. So it might be if you've had a long day and you really, really can't fold forwards today for whatever reason, you can bring the foam pads up, rest the head and rest the arms. Still work the legs. Stretch forwards this way. Being mindful that my abdomen is broad, my leg is firm. Come up, go back to the first side. Lift up and fold. Thinking forwards, not down. Release the shoulders, relax the neck, firm straight right leg. Inhale, come up. Sit tall, release the hands and change sides. Raise the arms up to open the ribs. Pull the forwards, take the chair, inhale, extend. Lift the chest. And then release the head towards the chair, but still keeping the body moving forwards. Keeping the straight leg firm, spreading through the toes. Releasing across the shoulders. Lifting the body away from the thighs, keeping the abdomen soft. Inhale, come up, sit tall, and stretch your leg forwards. Pull the butt of flesh out and back. Lift up through the chest. Ardha Baddha Padma Paschimottanasana. So this one, I prefer to do seated flat. Now you're either going to bring your legs. So when we do Ardha Baddha Padma Paschimottanasana, again, it all, all the knee things apply, all the supports apply. We draw the leg up, the right leg comes up the thigh, the knee stays as low as possible, the thigh rolls, and the foot comes to the top of the thigh, like so. Okay, now if this isn't possible, you can go back and do Janu Shishasana. So the heel, again, we're coming back to here, but this time we're lower down, okay? Again, giving the knee the support that it needs. So you basically, this bent leg is here, it's to be rested. 
Yeah, so if it's not resting, you need to give it something to lie on, something nice. It's got its own bed so it can snooze, have a sleep. Inhale, raise the arms up. And exhale, fold forward. So this one, to my mind, is easier because the foot is now pinning the thigh down. Again, get the chest to lift, but press the straight leg down. Release across the shoulders. So if you're working the pose, have the arms straight. If you're feeling like you need to just do this in a recuperative manner, rest the arms. Rest your head either on your arms or to the chair. Keep the shoulders broad, not adding tension where the tension is not needed. Inhale, come up. Sit tall, change. So straighten through the right leg. Pull the buttock flesh out and back. Then the left leg. Bring it up into our Dabada Padma Pashimottanasana. Raise your arms up and exhale, fold forwards towards the chair, resting the head, pressing the straight leg down, releasing across the shoulders, relax the eyes and release the tongue. Keep spine ascending, back of the neck long. So you've got some grounding, so you know that the body can fly like a kite and the strings being held. So the leg is very much grounded, it's a grounding influence. Release the leg and back to the first side. Bring the leg up so that the side of the foot comes into the crease of the thigh and the knee comes in. Put your hands to the chair and let yourself lift up. Move the spine in and drop the shoulders. Keep the straight leg pressing down and then exhale, fold forwards. So resting the hands to the chair seat. Lift and lengthen through the body, back of the neck long. Side ribs broad and ascending, spine moving deeper into the back. You'll feel the paraspinal muscles working. But don't allow that tension to come up into the neck and into the head. Rest the head. Inhale, sit tall. Straighten the right leg. Pull the right buttock flesh out. Then the left leg. Allowing the leg to slide up the thigh to come into its place. Press the straight leg down, hands to the chair, lift the chest, move the spine in, drop the shoulders. Exhale, fold. Drawing the inner leg groin back on that right, right thigh. being on the center of the heel on the right leg. So the toes are pointing directly up towards the ceiling, pressing the back of the knee down on the straight leg and keeping the left leg soft. Move the spine deep into the back. 
the abdomen broad and soft. So for Paschimottanasana, you have a choice. You can either sit flat, or what is easier and nicer is to sit up on a just one foam pad. What it does is it allows your legs to drop a little lower. It allows the sacrum to move in, to move forwards a little. Lift up through the chest. You're gonna exhale, fold forwards towards the chair. Keep the legs firm, rest the arms and hold. If you want to stretch the arms up, if you find that more beneficial, then take the arms up. You can see your knees, make sure your knees are level, that the inner groins are firm, the legs are straight. Lift the chest away from the thighs. So again, this looks like you're not doing very much, you're actually working really quite hard and you're in charge of how much effort you put into this pose. lengthen a little more. Legs firm. Inhale, come up, sit tall, see how you feel. So you should start to be developing an awareness of what's going on here but also how firm the back needs to be too. Grip the legs, raise the arms, stretch up. And exhale, fold forwards to the chair again, resting the head down, allowing the inner leg groins to move back in towards the body, rolling the thighs in, shins are level, lifting the ribs away from the body, sorry, lifting the ribs away from the legs, keeping the body broad, abdomen broad and soft. And exhale, release, sit tall, lift through the chest. So just to release the spine now, we're going to do Barra Vajrasana, Barra Vajrasana. And we're going to do it seated on a block. It's very simple. So here, your legs are forwards. So you just bring your legs around to the right side. The knees are separated, left hand comes behind, right hand on the outside edge, your left knee lift and turn. Keep the buttocks level, shoulders level, and come back to centre, whip your legs around to the left, still stay sitting on a block or two blocks if you need more height, lift and turn. Keeping a nice space again for the abdomen. And come back to centre, back to the first side. And sit up, sit nice and tall, lift through the chest and turn. Finally turning the head, allowing yourself to move a little more, but don't let the head kid you that you're moving more than you are. Come back to centre. And the second side. Turn. 
and through the body. Using this arm as a lever, using your left arm as a lever to get the shoulder blade to move deep into the back. Still ascending the spine, crown of the head in line with the tailbone. And finally turning the head, looking over your right shoulder. And come back to centre. Straighten the legs forwards. We'll come to simple cross legs. Okay, we're going to do uh, Shavangasana using the chair. So for me, this again, you've got to play with this because I've got a very long back and I've got quite short legs, which makes my forward bends look really quite clever. But it's just that I've got very long arms too. Um, so for me, I need to have uh, two foam blocks. Um, on my chair. Now to stop them from slipping around, I've got the sticky mat there as well. So I'm going to put this sticky mat over the chair seat, like so. And then my two blocks are coming on top and they're sandwiched together. Okay, my bolster comes down here and my I'm going to slide off the chair and my shoulders are going to rest on the bolster. Okay. Now this is vanity. Well, it's not vanity. Two things. One, the sticky mat pulls my hair out and second, it's much easier to slide to come out of the pose when you've got a blanket to lie on. Okay. So come and straddle your chair. Now you've got to make sure that your chair is stable, so you are entirely responsible for your chair and the chair you're doing it over. This one is a yoga chair and I've had it for years and I trust it completely. So you put your legs over the chair um, and if you've never done this before, then may I recommend that you go and find yourself an Iyengar teacher, okay, and get them to show you how to do it. Um, because it's, it's much easier. As you put yourself back into the pose, um, there's a kind of, there's a little bit of fear before you drop down. So you just have to know that you can hold yourself. Now the legs stay gripping the chair, okay? You exhale, you lower yourself down, holding onto the chair legs, and then letting your shoulders come onto the bolster, like so. Okay, from here, you post your hands through the chair and hold the chair legs. And your hips are supported by the foam pad. And you can then stretch your legs away. Creating a really nice length through the abdomen. Mounds the big toes, stretch away. You can roll the shoulders down and open up through the chest. Getting the spine to move deep into the back. And having the chair back there, you can really work the legs. Once you've got that leg work, just raise your leg up, straight up, and the other leg straight up. So quite often we hold a lot of tension within the abdomen when we do certain poses, and we forget to work our legs. We get caught up in our middles. So you can see your legs here. You can work them really strongly, taking the head of the calf up towards the heels spreading through the toes, rolling the inner legs back. The shoulders are supported. You don't need to use your um, effort to lift the body up. You can just put the effort into the legs. It's a really good leg strengthener, this pose. Keep the chest lifted. Keep the legs firm. Just have to keep reminding yourself of all the little actions. The knees, the turning of the thighs. So the knees, they move in towards the leg. The thighs, they roll in towards each other. The toes are spread. Then the chest lifts. And then you've forgotten your knees again, so you've got to go back, remind the knees, spread head up through the calves, up towards the heels, so there's a length on the back of the heels. The toes are still spreading. The thighs, have they gone to sleep? Has the chest just dropped? Are you still holding the chair? Then the knees, then the calves, soles of the feet, 
thighs, abdomen soft, hips, outer hips moving down, there's a new one, chest lifted, shoulders rolling away so the biceps roll from inside to out. Then you've got to remember the knees again. So all these actions, people say that you're just holding something very still, but to hold something very still, you need to develop these actions. You need to get the head of the calf still to move towards the heel. Open the backs of the knees, work the thighs. It's like painting the seven bridge. And keep breathing. But the lovely thing about it is when you're focused on these actions, the brain, the mind becomes very quiet. So you can stay here for five minutes, as long as you're feeling benefit from the pose. And with the shoulder stand variation, you can hold it when you're feeling weaker or sort of more fatigued. You can actually re-energize by making the legs work. But it's so quietening on the brain that you actually come out and feel refreshed. Open the chest, make sure the neck's soft, keep the face looking up towards your toes. Just very carefully bend the legs and place them onto the back of the chair. Release your hands. And you gently slide off your seat. Tipping the chair back so that the thighs are supported. Tuck the shoulder blades deep into the back. fingers gently curl, allow the body to rest here. Relaxing through the legs, releasing through the arms. Stay here for a few moments. You may decide that your relaxation will start here. Or you may wish to lie flat. If you wish to lie flat, then slide onto your bolster just a little bit more. Release the legs, roll onto your side. Remove your props, put them to one side. Have yourself sitting in Dandarsan. If you're cold, take your blanket, put it over your thighs. Let your feet flop out to the side. Carefully lower yourself down, staying in one long straight line. Cover yourself up. Tuck your shoulder blades deep into the back. Stretch your legs away so that your arms feel long, but the shoulder blades, the tips of shoulder blades are moving in and your legs feel long. Sorry, just covered up the microphone. We're getting too into 
my relaxation. So here, again, stretch the arms away, stretch the legs away, gently close the eyes and allow the body to rest down, releasing from the crown of the head down to the soles of the feet. And at this point, I'll say namaste and allow you to take your relaxation for 5, 10, 15 minutes, however long you feel you need. When it's time to get up, gently bend up the legs or onto your right side. Look down at the floor, press with your left hand to push yourself up. Come back to a seated posture and sit for a few moments before you get on with the rest of your day or the rest of your evening. Thank you.